Good morning. I'm Austin Pearson. I'm with the Austin Police Department located here at the airport. I'm also attached to the bomb squad. Um, I am a canine handler. His name is Jerry. He's a nine-year-old German Shepherd. Um, me and Jerry have been together for about almost seven years now. There's actually four of us here stationed here at the airport. Um, four dogs. There's two German Shepherds, one Belgian Malinois, and one German Shorthair Pointer. Ready? If there's a threat of a bag or somebody doesn't know that the bag's supposed to be there, Jerry has to check it out. Where's Jerry? Somebody might call in, like a bomb on a plane. So when the plane lands, we go in there and we check the inside of the plane and then also the luggage. Sometimes there's vehicles that people leave unattended here at the airport. Um, we also have to check those too. We are attached to the bomb squad, so we do take calls out there in the city. What we have set up for you today, I buried some odor out there and it's gonna be a little bit difficult for him, but he should be fine. And basically what this is kind of set up for is if they call and they say, hey, there's something out in this field, um, there's a bomb out in the field or something like that. So we have to do a search of the field to make sure it's clear. When Jerry's working, you'll see him, we're just gonna be walking and we, we use the wind. And when he picks up, you'll see him, he'll, he'll be walking straight and then he'll just automatically just dart to the right or the left if, you know, into the wind. Smelling it. He's got it. So when you see that, that means he's in the odor. Okay. And you'll see him and his nose will be up. That's a good boy, that's a good boy. Good boy, Jerry. The bomb dogs, we want them to sit when they find something. We want them to scratch anything, uh, nudge anything, because if it's an explosive and, it, and that's one of the triggers, that can make it go boom, of course. When he's actually sniffing, he's the one in charge. I'm not in charge. I'm just along for the ride at that point. Um, so there's, there's different things as a handler and as a team that we have to work together. Jerry does go home with me every day, so he is part of the family. <laughs> sit. Sit. Jerry, sit. Good boy. Heel. Every time they find an odor, or they do what you ask them to do and they do it, you have to reward them. The guys in maintenance designed this float. They drew it on a piece of cardboard. They drew a picture of it, then outlined it, and did a cutout in the cardboard. And then that's when they had their prototype, and they went with it and used the wood to build it the same way. That's how they came up with the design. Yeah, it has a little seat. Good morning, people. This is Fight of America. And we use other old radio components that we had from the Air Force. We posted it on a piece of wood in there to make it look like they're real airplane components. Everybody, we're officially out of pretzel. We use it for the Chewy's Parade, the Juneteenth Parade, and the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, three times a year, we go downtown uh, to show representation of the airplane. This is Field Maintenance Division. These are safety glasses, guys. For our presentation, there may be some debris flying. I can't see without my glasses, so I have to put them on over my glasses. Otherwise, I won't see anything. <laughs> some of the things that we do out here, we're in charge of the grounds. One of the things you saw over here is the grinding of some branches. And as the branches get ground up, they get put into a dump truck and we haul them off. We use a lot of dirt to cover up holes, to even up roads, and to level out a bunch of areas out here that need to be smooth. That's what these guys are doing with the dump truck and the backhoe and the front end loader. We have big open fields out here that we mow with big tractors. That's what you see back there, the guy on that field mower, that's what he's doing. We have to keep the grass cut very low so that the aircraft, that they can shoot their signals and it bounces back. If the grass is too tall, it would interfere with that. We also have a striping truck over here. We keep everything painted, runways and taxiways and roadways for everything to move along smoothly. You guys happy to be here? Yeah, you excited to see some fire trucks and things like that? Very good, very good. My name is uh, Reggie Tate, I'm a fire specialist. Everybody know what a smoke detector is, right? Okay, uh, we'd like you to check it once a month. Talk to your parents and make sure that there's a place for you to meet outside of the house. So if the fire is burning and you decide you're gonna meet in the backyard near the tree, that's where all the family is, 
and it helps us show up because if we find out that you're lost, we can just go to the backyard and see that you're at the tree with the rest of the family. He's getting ready to put his air tank on because can we breathe smoke? No. Nope. One breath of smoke and you can pass out. All right? So we have to have this air on. Let me ask you a question. When you guys are at home, if there's a fire, do you ever want to go back in your house once you get out? No. Never ever. Oh, what if you have your favorite pet in there? Your no. pet. You want to run through your pet? Well, I, if I was still in there, I would go back. Okay. No. Is that the right thing to do? No. Should you go back in? No. Let us know. We have the gear, we're dressed out, we're not gonna die going to get the animal. You will. So just tell us, as soon as you get out, hey, my cat is still in there, we'll go and save the puppy, we'll go and save it. Everybody has animals here? Everybody has animals? A lot of people? I mean, they're family, right? We see them the same way, but we don't want you dying to go get that animal. We'll take care of that. Here we go, he, now it's Darth Vader. Whoa. All right, so he's on air. The only thing is exposed to his hands. We're just not gonna put gloves on right now. But, can you say something to him, Sean? How are you guys doing? You guys ever touched the guy dressed out? You ever felt him? Come on in, come on in, let's, let's check him out. All right, here you go, there you go. So if there's a fire, what we want you guys to do is come up and grab onto him. Don't be afraid, but grab onto him. Let him know you're there. I can just pull up to the curb and flow water, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna make the loop, go back here, get some speed. Come up here and stop on the dime and flow water. On a true aircraft emergency, that, that's really what our job is, is to get there quickly and to flow water quickly. So I'm gonna simulate that. I'm gonna start with my, um, my bumper nozzle, okay, as far as my water flow goes, then I'm going to uh, raise the boom and flow. I will flow from the bumper and the roof. I have a button I can hit to, that basically raises the, uh, the roof nozzle automatically too, and that's just cool. That's just one thing we, less we have to worry about if we're leaving the station in the current. Trans evolution, where I stopped on a dime there, that's legitimate real world because um, uh, the, the incidents, they happen that quick. You need to get there and throw water as soon as possible. We have a trainer where we actually practice poking into an aircraft. I'd like to do that. You get in place and at this point, you, you shouldn't have to move the truck at all. Uh, it basically should be all with the uh, boom positioning. But time is of essence, of course, when things are burning. We would stop position and say, hey, I need you to flow water a little bit higher than you did. Okay, great. The truck driver should have the truck in the position good enough where you can just, just go up and, and push it in. Now you know how it works. Honey cheese, ma'am. Pure deliciousness. <laughs> Why do you think airport needs an art person. Why do airports need art? Any ideas? <laughs> to, did I hear to make it pretty? Yeah, and col colors affect people's mood. They make people happy. Colors make people relax. And the art also educates people that come to the airport about Austin. So it's a great educational tool to tell people about our wonderful city. So that's why we have art here at the airport. And I would love for you all to make a piece of art that educates travelers about 
the airport. And you guys have had a great morning seeing what your parents or grandparents or guardians have been doing, what they do here at the airport. And so I would like you all to draw either, I, I'll give it a, a choice, either your favorite thing that you saw today on the tour, or draw a picture that represents what your parent, grandparent, or guardian does. So what are you making? The angels. Oh, sure. It's a firefighter. So whether they're working on a computer all day, or they're helping people, or they're working outside, or they're working with planes, I leave it up to your creativity. And what we're going to do, I'm going to give you all a canvas to create your art piece, and make sure you sign it at the bottom. And then I'm going to frame your art piece, and I'm going to put it all together into a collage that I'm going to display at the airport. And we're going to call it our ABIA Community Hive, because all of your artwork is going to represent think different jobs and your favorite things about the airport. And just like a hive of bees all work together to get the job done, we all here at the airport, we do very different jobs, but we all keep the airport going. So it's going to be a great educational tool for people to look at and see as they're traveling.